Hello everyone, Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. I'm doing a quick video today to introduce you guys to the Beta 1 build of Emulation Station for Windows 10. Specifically, this build is aimed at the AI Neo, the AI Retro Power, and the AI Neo Pro. However, you can use it on any Windows PC. You just have to keep in mind that you'll need to reconfigure some controllers if you're not using something that's recognized as an Xbox 360 controller. So, you got your AI Neo, you're on Windows. First things first, you go to the website, the link will be in the description, it's techtoytinker.com. You want to go to Emulation Station for PC. You're going to want to download the build that will be uploaded in about an hour. It should come out around the same time as this video. It will be labeled as for AI Neo. Once you have that, you want to extract it from your flash drive or download folder. I recommend you put it on the device because it's much faster to extract than it is from a flash drive. You want to extract it directly to your C drive. Now, what you will see is this folder right here, Emulation Station. You want to extract it from the zip here to your C drive. And now, the file named RetroBat is your launcher. You can make a shortcut of that and paste it to the desktop. If you want to make it easier to launch, you can go into, and you could take that shortcut and put it into the Startups tab if you want it to auto-boot when you first turn on the device. Now, I'll launch it real quick and give you a view here. So this is a custom build of Emulation Station with all the emulators and everything pre-set up for you, and it's using RetroBat to handle the back end. RetroBat is open source as well. Let me give you guys a preview here. There are no ROMs and no BIOS. You will have to add those yourself. But everything you're seeing in this video is in the build. All you have to do is add your own stuff. Your own legitimately owned games. Hikaru is really difficult to set up. You will have to mess around with DC emulator or DC EMUL and set up the controls, which can be a little bit difficult. Barring that, though, Hikaru does work. Naomi's fine. Naomi 2, same deal as Hikaru. Chihiro here. I have recently added and made work. However, I've only been able to get one game to work so far. I don't know if it's because it's a bad dump of the game or because the emulator is in an infancy stage in terms of those emulations, but I've only been able to get Virtual Cop 3 to work. Oh, now granted, I've only tried four or five titles because I don't have access to that many, but... As you can see, we're playing Virtual Cop 3 from Sega Chihiro. Works fine. I'm not going to play it for a long time. That's not the intent of this particular video. The only thing here is because this is a beta build, I clearly forgot to put the artwork there. Not a big deal. I can literally just upload that one single video file with instructions as to where to drag and drop it and it'll fix that problem. Someone just remind me in the comments. Oh, PS2 here. I fixed this recently, so there's no more foolery with the screen. You can just direct launch it. It'll boot right into the game. I was having an issue before where... I, I'm sure you guys have seen in a previous video where you actually had to... It just launched the GUI, and then you had to click on the game you wanted. That's been fixed now, so you can direct launch your games. The only difference is you still got to press escape to get out of it. And you gotta click that to close it. But, not a big deal. PSP is PSP. PS3, I've showed this in a previous video, but since this is a tutorial kind of, I will show you again quickly. You will open PSP, or PS3, I should say, sorry, and it will open the main screen where you click open, pick your game, and that's that. And you press X to go back to Emulation Station. Tara Supervision. 
I try to be very thorough when I do builds. I add a lot of emulators. Your configuration here, for those that are new to this stuff. It's where you find all your emulator configurations and your RetroArch configuration. Alternatively, you can navigate through the folder structure and make your changes manually. As I exit Emulation Station, I'll show you the folder structure in greater detail. This is TechnoParrot. I've showed that in a previous video, so I'm not getting super into it. When you launch this, it will launch the TechnoParrot GUI, where you will click on your game and set it up. For TechnoParrot, it's easier to set it up manually before you open Emulation Station. Just using the TechnoParrot GUI only. There's currently about 120 different systems in here. And you can launch your Windows games, your Steam, whatnot, simply by dragging, making a shortcut to the executive file and then dragging and dropping it into the Windows folder in ROMs. As you can see, though, there's quite an extensive amount of things here. This is also the same deal. This is using uh, DCEMUL. It's a real pain to set up, but it does work. Same is true with Xbox 360. Only some games work, but it is not the fault of the device. It's the fault of the... Well, the fault of the emulator. The emulator's not fully functional yet. It's, uh... Not a lot of people know a lot about Xbox, and it has a very small community when it comes to the 360. So much like there was a lack of homebrew, there's also a lack of people working on custom firmwares for it, and emulators. This is PC-88 and PC-98. You can't see the 98 because the background's black, but it is. Wii, you also have to set up your own controllers. I didn't do it for you guys because it's completely individual how you want to play it. GameCube is set up, however. As is Wii U, but there are no title keys included. No ROMs, no BIOS, no title keys. You must provide all of that stuff yourself. Same is true with Switch. There's no prod key, no title keys. You must provide your own. We all know how to do this. Everybody who has a modded Switch knows exactly how to get them. I don't need to explain any of that, and I'm not going to. This, however, I will show you very, very quickly. I'm glad that this works, and I really like this. Watch this. Oh, I didn't configure my controller in this either. So that's how you configure a controller in Messin. Pretty straightforward and easy. But look at the HD packs. This goes into BIOS HD packs, by the way, when you get them. You can full screen this, by the way. Your options, video size, full screen. You can play with the settings to stretch it if you are so inclined also. I really like the HD texture packs. This is regular Mario Brothers for NES. Look at how good it looks. Alright, that's enough of that. These two buttons here are to exit everything except for PS2, PS3, and uh, Dolphin. Those use Escape. And we're pretty much back to where we started. So with that, you can go like this and quit. Now, 
I was talking about the folder structure. Here it is. So you, you unzipped your zip to C, and this is exactly what you have. The retro bat is your launcher. You can make your shortcut. We've discussed that already. BIOS is obvious. It's the BIOS. The emulators are where all of your uh, emulators are. So CEMU and Yuzu are the ones that require the keys. You know how to set those up, and if you don't, there's a lot of things you can Google that will tell you. ROMs here is where your ROMs go. If you go into Emulation Station and then into Dot Emulation Station, that is where you can add themes. And when I supply the one video that's missing, you will go into the Emulation Station, Dot Emulation Station, Themes, Hyperspin, 16 by 9 videos, and you'll drop the video into that location. Just to show you. Sorry, there's art in between. All the videos go there. This is where your emulation station launcher and everything are as well. It's using Botocera ES and as such has the built-in artwork scraper, so you don't have to worry about trying to do that independently. Do not, under any circumstances, play with your ES systems config or the other configuration files unless you know what you're doing. You can break it and then it won't work anymore. If you're going to play with it, I strongly advise that you make a backup of it first. Which should be easy to do if you kept the zip. You can just drag and drop it out of the zip. That's really about all you need to know. You literally just unzip it, add your BIOS, add your ROMs, and away you go. I've built it so it pretty much works out of the box for everything, except for one or two controller configurations you might have to do manually. Which you can simply do just by going wrong folder into the emulators folder and then opening the emulator directly. Let's say you wanted to set up Dolphin. It's already set up, but if you wanted to do it for Wii, you would then go into here, go to Configure. You can plug in a mouse and keyboard. You can do it with a touchscreen. Works all those ways. So, I'm going to end that video here. The build should be released within the hour. If you have any um, questions, you can feel free to leave something in the comments. If you need more in-depth help, you will find the link to the website for the download in the description of this video. On that same website, you can find the Facebook group, you can find the Discord server. Both of those are places where you can ask more in-depth questions and receive help from myself directly or one of the developers at Retro Arena and Tech Toy Tinker. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care.